Good evening, gentlemen. Chris here. Tonight, uh, I'm going to do my first straight razor shave video, talk about a few products that I'm using here tonight. Um, but uh, basically, I'm not going to talk a whole lot in this, or at least I'm hoping not to. I'm just going to kind of focus on what it is I'm doing because that's kind of important when you've got an open blade to your face. So uh, tonight, I'm going to be using uh, Katie's Bubbles LPV again uh, with my Mula Synthetic Brush. Um, you know, I wanted to do straight barbershop scents tonight, and uh, as soon as I went for anything else, I hesitated and I said, it's got to be LPV tonight, because when it comes to using your straight razor, there's nothing that compares to having that slickness. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, one of the things I'm finding very important is, um, and I want to quickly show this to you guys really quick. This Mula Synthetic is really, really awesome. Um, the flow through on it is really good. Um, any of you guys that had the uh, Simpson Synthetic know how it kind of pushed uh, the lather around your face and let it, but this flows through excellently, as you can see. And applies it nice and smooth. Um, I can't remember who it was that had said they were a little bit turned off by the fact that some companies were starting to call it synthetic badger and I didn't understand what they meant until I got my first synthetic brush and that is these brushes are awesome in their own right they don't have to be um, compared to badger um, they're just really, really great all on their own. Um, but what I've done is I've put some lather on my face here, and part of the prep I do for a straight razor shave is I apply a uh, hot steaming towel, which I just took, uh, you just take a, a regular hand towel, um, soak it in water, and put it in the microwave. I put it in there for about two minutes, two minutes, and go ahead and put it on there. Yeah, I mean, I don't put it on there for that long. But what you do is put a coat of shaving cream on, get some lather on your face, and then apply the hot towel over that. And what that'll do is that heat will really soften up your hair um, and uh, the humectants in it will act and soften everything up because you really don't want your hair to be very, very stiff uh, when you're going to be taking a straight razor to it. You want it to kind of slice cleanly through and not tug and pull. Um, and the more resistance you give it with a, with a, a tougher or a, a less soft hair is going to really change the way that the shave goes. So you want to put that lather on first, put your hot towel on, and then I'll go ahead and apply for your first pass. Man. And um, the whole month of August for me is straight razor only. Um, I have to thank uh, Anthony Esposito for inspiring that stallion. And um, my good friend... Uh, Eric Shewitt for making that possible. Eric was uh, very instrumental in uh, getting my uh, straight razor back to me after a while. Uh, he kind of got into it after doing DE for a little bit. Sorry for the little cut in the video there. Something happened with my phone. Don't know what happened there. But we're going to go ahead and, uh, and get started here. Uh, I am using my um, Dovo Bismarck. Uh, this is a 7 8 or I'm sorry, 6 8 uh, carbon steel blade uh, with ebony scales. Uh, really, really beautiful gold uh, gold wash on it. Uh, really, really beautiful blade. As soon as I saw it, I knew this is the straight razor I wanted. And so far, it's proved to be really, really good. So we're going to go ahead and start uh, with uh, the right side here. Pulling up and get that angle really good. I've already stropped this blade. And... Uh, I'm learning a little bit more about that. Uh, that's been a little bit, th that technique has been a little bit difficult for me to learn. But, and nice short passes. Uh, I am finding that I think that there's a little bit of uh, hesitation at first with people with straight razors because they don't, they think that they're just supposed to 
not apply any pressure at all that it's supposed to be kind of a feather touch and I'm finding that to not be the case um I'm finding I do have to put a tiny bit of pressure in there not a lot but enough uh for your jawline well I guess I don't have to do anything on the jawline there let's go ahead and go around back back of the neck and okay very good so that's one side um i am a little bit weak with my off hand here but we're gonna see how this goes I uh, rinse off my blade rather frequently, um, and you'll notice that uh, that I'm doing a rinse. I'm not. Uh, I don't have like a basin filled with water here and slapping around my blade in there, you know, doing this in order to get everything off because you could you could hit your blade on the sink and you don't want anything like that going on. So. Now, left side neck is where I, I seem to have most of my problems. Um, and you're going to notice that here. But uh, the way that I get around it is usually like the contour right here I have a lot of trouble with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up on the skin and do it that way. But it's kind of difficult to see. Uh, there, man, that's uh, that little pass is not fun for me. Going weak hand has never been good. Nice, but you know it gets better and better. This is my uh, fifth or sixth shave with it, and um. I just uh, I take my time. Now we're gonna go with the uh, we're gonna go under the nose. Uh, now under the nose, I kind of go a little bit more detailed. Uh, I find that the different areas where you use the blade are very important. Uh, kind of the middle and the flat face I'll use for very uh, very um, open or or flat contours. I start to kind of go a little bit more towards the point when I'm going into places like under my nose. I mean, as you can see, that's where my uh, cream ends up. And I have to say, I feel like I'm getting a lot better with the stropping because the blade goes through a lot easier. Um, so what I do, kind of move my nose out of the way here. Get that right there. Now I just come in here and get the chin. Now, uh, even with the safety razor, the chin has been a trouble spot for me, and I never really seem to get that completely clean. But with the straight razor, I find that more often than not. I can get it pretty darn clean. Give it another contour here. You certainly uh, end up making some goofy faces. Uh, and you're using a straight razor, probably not good to have someone watching you do it. You know the other example. Now again, I'm going to go to the point in order to sort of do some fine detail work down there. So if you ever need more control, at least it's my opinion that I just kind of go a little bit more with the point edge. Okay. So 
Uh, first pass is done. Everything feels pretty good. Now, I have been able to get my shaves down to two passes uh, with the straight razor. I don't find myself doing three. So, we'll see if I can do that again tonight. Now, I'll have to say that straight razor shaving just adds a very different dimension to uh, this experience of wet shaving. And um, it, uh, it can tend to be quite intimidating at first. Um, but if you give it some time, uh, take some time to learn this tool, uh, it, it's very, very valuable. And uh, I find it gives some of the best shaves that I've ever had. So uh, these next passes, I'm gonna go up on my neck and I start with my right hand across and very, very light with my first little, my first couple touches here. And that's always so I can kind of get my bearing and know when my blade is touching and then I don't accidentally dig into my skin, thereby causing a nick. And let's, let's be honest here, a straight razor doesn't cause nicks. It, causes bloody wounds. So, so there we go. I get all the way all the way to the jawline. That's nice. Now holding from the other side here. Let's go ahead and uh, give this a whirl. I know my technique isn't uh, it's far from bulletproof, but I'm serviceable at this point. Get really nice full uh, Full blade contact right there, even with the left hand. So let's go ahead. Again, leading with the point. And there we go. The neck is done and it's feeling pretty nice. Uh, so I go upwards on that second pass here on my neck. I might have to do a little bit of touching up, but that's fine. Uh, now I'll go ahead and yank in my ear here and do side passes across the grain. And I'll sort of follow with my hand. Now, again, as I said, you know, with a straight razor, I, I don't think you put, someone was telling me this, it might have been Anthony, that said that you don't really get to know the full test of slickness of stuff with a double-edged razor, and that's the truth. Um, you really only get to know that using a straight because slickness is of the utmost importance here and um, if you don't have it you're gonna have problems and I know that because I certainly uh, in my couple shaves with this thing um, I have gone ahead and tried some of my other favorite soaps, which are still great soaps, but they just don't measure up when it comes to using a straight razor. They don't have that slickness. So, okay, so now um, under my nose, I'm not gonna do the uh, famous fool's pass. This is not a good idea. Um, I'm just gonna kind of feather in with that point here.
And what I'll do is I'll complete in one direction. So I've come, I've swept this way across. And then what I'll do before I move on to the chin, which I'll kind of get some lather up there. <laughs> wow, that's, I know what the, the uh, thumbnail of this video is gonna be. And then um, I know that this is maybe an incorrect way to hold it, but I'll hold it like this and go back across the other way. in order to make sure it's completely smooth. And yep, I'm there. Great. Now, the chin is a little bit of the same thing, um, but I just kind of get my tongue there under my upper lip and try to make it as flat as possible and do a sideways pass. Chinny chin. And um, we're feeling a lot better. I may, um, I kind of end up doing some touch ups on my, uh, on my chin here because it is a hard contour to get to. And uh, get a, a little bit along my uh, my front jawline because that's where I do have some issues. So I'm gonna go ahead and tidy this up. Some longer strokes of maybe a little bit more pressure. Almost done. <laughs> I'm certainly learning. I'm, I'm sure that uh, some of you straight razor guys are probably screaming right now. What the hell are you gripping it like that? What are you doing? So, that's my passes. This is done. We want to make sure this is completely dry before we uh, we stow it. Let's go ahead and uh, rinse my case off here. So, now the question is this. Um, how badly is this going to burn when I put some aftershave on it? Now. I know one guy who's particularly hoping that it burns a lot, and that's because um, I kind of busted his chops a little bit early, and that's uh, Daniel Franzak. Um, today, he's been busting my chops to get some of this, some uh, Panade um, Clubman aftershave for a while, so I finally got some here. And um, I think it feels pretty clean. Let's go ahead and uh, splash some of this stuff on. And uh, someone said to enjoy the burn. I hope it's not that bad. Hmm? Not bad at all. 
a little bit more on the perfumey side for me. I don't know where uh, people get off saying this is a barbershop scent. I don't know, maybe when it dries down, it will uh, it'll turn a little bit, but... Okay, guys, well, that's the uh, that's the shave for tonight. Uh, thank you very much to uh, the Stanley and Anthony Esposito uh, for inspiring this month. Um, it's been a, a big learning curve, but I'm um, having a lot of fun with it. Uh, thanks to my Honemeister, Eric Schuett. Uh, he's a great guy, a friend of mine who um, has been doing some honing at his house, and, uh, you know, I hope he will uh, show me the craft next time. Um, yeah. So thanks, guys. You guys all have a good night. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Make sure you like and subscribe if you feel so inclined. And I'll see you guys again really soon. Have a good one.